a lot of bull. September 28, 1998. Dear Fred and Father, Well, it will be a day I'll remember. Tuesday, July 14th, 1998. The middle of mid-America. Nothing but nice people and bulls all around. It was earlier that day when your number one son, Gregory, had called me at work and asked, Are you ready to have your boyhood dream come true? What, buy a farm, I answered. No, he laughed. We had already done that a few years back. He informed me that our rancher buddy, Goodman, had called. What are you doing tonight? My brother asked. Nothing that I can't get out of, was my reply. You want to get on the back of a bull? <laughs> I'm in. The schedule was cleared. A chance of a lifetime was conveniently plopped into my cube, and computer boy turned old man at 45 had no choice. I was in. Oh yeah, baby, I was in. After the phone call, the rest of the day was a blur. When I got home from work, I had to unload half a ton of small rock out of the back of the pickup into five-gallon buckets, lug them up the hill, and dump them by hand into the backyard. I'd been meaning to do that for several weeks now. I walked Wolf, king of the German shepherds, and put him in the back of the truck. I decided that if nothing else, I might get a chance to socialize him around the farm animals. Believe me, he never left his crate. Even I could envision the dance of the thundering bulls as they trampled dog and owner. No, this environment was very low-key. Just kids riding bulls on a Tuesday night for $10 a go-round. Gentle people. Quiet people. Nice people. Bull people. Oh, did I mention young people? God, these guys riding were all in their late teens to mid-twenties. Sorting out the bulls is a delicate job, and it moves at its own pace. The herd is gathered, young people on horses work the hills in a relatively calm and quiet symphony. Everyone is silent. There's no loud talking as the bulls walk past the pens where the headman, a kid in his twenties working stock for rodeos and riding bulls on the side, carves up the herd. Fifty or so bulls come in, twenty or so stay. The rest are turned out to pasture. Of course, there are those who don't take well to captivity. I've seen a thousand pound bull jump an eight foot fence made out of railroad ties. Twice. Different bulls. It would make anyone with intelligence stop and think. Of course, I never gave it a thought. <laughs> the night progressed well. Great rides, nobody hurt. But then, hurt is a relative thing. I'm of the opinion that nobody walks away from these animals without some kind of pain, which, by the way, doesn't really show up until a few days later. The deeper the injury, the longer it takes to surface and heal. I personally am scabbing after two days and therefore feel very fortunate. <laughs> Toward the end of the evening, they corralled a particular bull into a chute off of the sty. They said his name was Tornado and he was mine. I said, great, but could I get one with horns? Everybody laughed. Suddenly I was motioned over to the pen so I could sit on Tornado's back. Everybody was so kind. They gloved me up, wrapped my hand down just like they do on TV, and then backed it off one loop. No way you'll get hung up with this rep. Hey, great news to me. Nobody really thought I was going to do this. They just allowed me to sit on the back of old Tornado as a favor to Goodman. It wasn't until we went through the pen setup with the bull bucking up and down in the chute, again, just like you see on TV, that one of the bull riders helping me said in disbelief, you open in the gate? Oh yeah, baby, I didn't blink. This cowboy wanted to know if it was for real. Like I said, I'm in. Well, that answer seemed to cause a little turmoil. Well, that answer seemed to cause a little turmoil. They thought it would be best if I put on one of those Kevlar bulletproof vests for rib protection. Some nice kid handed me one and I squeezed into it. Wouldn't zip though. I told them it was okay, it would work. That was ignorance talking. But I wasn't going to let a little thing like safety get in the way. The riders understood. Charlie, the big guy in the group, was eventually summoned for his larger vest, but still, only by severe sucking in was I able to get it zipped. Now, what happens in the pen is a transition. This mountain of live meat starts getting a little edgy as you climb down onto its back. You stick your hand in the belly wrap, and once under the leather strap, they cinch it really tight. The bull gets goosey. You take both hands and pull the belt down towards your crotch as you scoot up on his shoulders as far as you dare, trying to find the center of gravity on a moving mass of flesh. 
You hold on to the gate and with your free hand in an attempt to keep your balance, since being tossed to the ground in the chute would mean certain death. At some point during this madness, you look the gatekeeper in the eye and nod the okay. An additional belt, already strategically placed in the genital area of the animal, is cinched up with a jerk. There's an explosion, and they open the gate. For a split second as we blast out of the chute, I thought to myself, I'm really going to do this thing. The next thing I felt was my head smashing against the ground. I remember being on all fours and looking up at the bull, three to four feet away, when it occurred to me that all he wanted to do was take his bruised ego out on me. It was at this point I remembered that Goodman had said, upon dismount, I was supposed to scamper on out of there. But I really didn't feel like scampering. The clowns came in and made it a moot point. Still pumped from the moment, I took off my hat, which was hanging by a strap unceremoniously around my neck, threw it to the ground, stomped on it, and shouted, Damn! Got hung up in the chute. I could hear the shouts of laughter mixed with shouts of praise as well. Over by the fence, there was quite a debate going on as to whether or not I lasted a full second. That's when Charlie said in a slow, understated, Midwestern tone, A second is a mighty long time. Like he said, A second is a mighty long time. May we all have our seconds. <laughs>